Okay, so next we've got another task two essay. Discuss both views and give your opinion. Okay, so the classic structure: some people think A, some people think B. I agree with A. Okay,、um, the key thing a lot of candidates need to be remember to be doing is that even though you do need to discuss both both views, it's also good to give your opinion、um, throughout the essay or make it clear from the start, from the introduction, which side which side you agree with and why. Um, let's have a look at the topic. Some people believe it's better to live and work in a vertical city. Ooh, <laughs> this is an unusual phrase. We would in in natural English we would never say vertical city with multiple tall buildings, as compared to a horizontal city.、Um, this is just something in the question. This isn't the candidate's fault. But literally, when I think of a horizontal city, I think of the buildings like being sideways, <laughs> like this, like a, a horizontal city.、Um, I I know what the question means. Like, is it better to live in a city with、um, skyscrapers or in like a sort of <laughs> a sort of a low rise?、Uh, we call it a sort of a, you know, future like a low rise apartment block or a low rise house.、Um, means short. <laughs> Vertical city, horizontal city. Horizontal city just has a funny image in my head. So it's not the candidate's fault at all, but it's, that's just something I want to pick up about the the topic. And、um, so discuss both views and give your own opinion. All right. There's a well known fact that living in cities surrounded by skyscrapers. Um, has become a new phenomenon around the world. Okay, I really like this. It is a well-known fact that this is a really nice way to start your essay. It's quite natural English.、Um, it's a little bit more high-level vocabulary. It's a little bit more unusual to use. So I think that's a positive thing. However, there are cons and pros. We always this is just a. It's always pros and cons. We we don't say cons and pros. I don't know why. It's just it, the 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 way it naturally is. It sounds so wrong to me to say cons and pros. It's always pros and cons. I'm making a pro and con list. There are many pros and cons to this.、Um, have you considered the pros and cons? Always pros and cons. However, there are pros and cons for, <laughs> pros and cons、uh, to this. In my view, the tall buildings bring tall buildings bring a great number of advantages to people. Okay. Um, okay, I like this. They've given me their opinion. Check. Tall buildings bring a great number of advantages to people. What I want to see your subtopics, you know, such as blank, or in terms of. Blah, 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 blah. Okay.、Um, so as an introduction, okay, I like the use of the word phenomenon. Become a new phenomenon. Good vocabulary around the world. There are pros and cons. I, the only thing I want to see is I want to see a little bit more detail about what they're actually going to talk about. Okay, but pretty solid introduction. There are two main reasons for defending why residents in a vertical city is optimistic. By residents, but why residing in a vertical city, and not the candidate's fault, is from the question is. Optimistic. Optimistic here is not the really the correct word. Okay, being optimistic, it's an emotion. Um, it's a personality trait.、Uh, it's not really related to benefit or advantages or disadvantages. Okay, so I would hear what they really need to say something in the lines of benefit. There are two main reasons for defending why residing in a vertical city is beneficial. Okay, that's what they need. It's 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 a benefit to you. It's not sort of so much about your feelings. Firstly, high-rise buildings provide a better, a way better infrastructure. Way better. Again, this is quite natural English. I like it. It is a little bit informal, though.、Um, a, a more formal way we just maybe just call it superior would be better. Firstly, high-rise buildings provide a superior infrastructure. For example, in Seoul, where a quarter of a, where a quarter of the total Koreans of、uh, total Koreans live, this capital city encounters a heavy traffic jam during rush hour every day. Public transport, such as subway, public buses, or trams, can effectively disperse its transportation. Okay. So my first question is, why does living in skyscrapers improve your infrastructure? What is this? He's not the kind of that's not related it to public transport. I'm guessing what they mean is that if everybody's living in these tall skyscrapers, there's more space to put a, a subway or a bus. I, I guess that's their meaning. But what they've not done in this is they've not linked these two ideas together. Okay.、Um, Public transport, such as subway, public buses, or trams, can effectively disperse its transportation, and therefore,、um, you know, space between large、uh, skyscrapers 
uh, can be utilized more effectively than in a low rise city. So you need to link it together. You need to explain that if you're living in a skyscraper, um, there's more space for other land use, okay? Or because you're living in a skyscraper, you can fit more people into a smaller area so that you can have more public transportation, okay? So it feels random to me. They've not linked this idea in. What is more, tall buildings offer a large number of residency. Offers a large number, a large number of, of com uh, a large number of apartments or tall buildings offer a large amount of you know a large number of apartments a large amount of residency um, you know something like that as I say these buildings are able to accommodate more people and eventually solve the problem of the high density of the population okay so th this is fine this is a good high density I like the word high density it's a very good specific word to use so I kind of like that so my main issue with this is that the public transportation Example feels weird and not linked into the topic, but the second point is much uh, stronger. On the other hand, opponents may argue that living in low house villages is better. Uh, in I would say in low rise villages, in more traditional uh, buildings, or in uh, small detached houses, maybe. First of all, many people still prefer a traditional house with their own front yards or gardens because the crowded city with skyscrapers does not have enough space for gardening as and can also look desolate. Furthermore, it's also safer for the low-rise building occupants to live and work compared to living in a tall apartment or an office building in case an emergency occurs such as fire or a collapse. Okay, I mean, this is also like a good... Uh, a good um, a good example, again, I would like to see here a sort of a specific example given to me to support your argument. And um, so they've given me a point, they've explained it, and then I want them to see them support it with a specific example. Um, okay, we had a couple of instances with slightly odd um, vocabulary here. Low house villages is an odd thing. Um, I, they've got desolate, so it's sort of they're trying to use more high level vocabulary, which is reasonably good. Their argument is logical and makes sense, not too bad. Okay, let's look at the conclusion. In conclusion, choosing an ideal place to live depends on a combination of factors, among which there are convenience and there is convenience and affordability. Um, I believe high-rise buildings are a very positive solution to the prospective problems resulting from urban development. Okay. Um, I think this is good, but the only reason thing is that you've not told me about any of the prospective problems resulting from urban development. You've not talked about this in your essay. You kind of mentioned collapse and 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 if, I guess public transport, but you've not structured your essay in a. One of the problems of living in cities uh, with high density population is the issue of public transport. For example, in cities like Mumbai in India, which where only 5% of the buildings are high rise. Um, people on average spend three hours a day stuck in traffic. In contrast, in Seoul, South Korea, where 45% of the buildings are high rise skyscrapers, people spend on average only one and a half hours stuck in traffic. Um, therefore, high rise buildings are an effective solution to the problem of traffic jams. Okay? That's the kind of argument that you make to sort of solve a problem. I think this candidate's not very clearly done problem, solution, problem, solution very clearly. Um, that's not, I like the idea of choosing an ideal place to live. I kind of like this ideal place. I like combination of factors. Um, so I can see this candidate really does have good vocabulary. Um, it's just slightly their task achievement I think is lacking slightly. So in terms of task achievement, um, they do address all parts of the task. Um, some parts are a little bit more developed. Some, bits, some parts are a little bit, you know, main ideas are limited, not sufficiently developed. So I would want to sort of, I guess, give a sort of 5.5 .5 for task achievement. Coherence and cohesion. You know, there is sort of an, a logical organization of the ideas. Um, you know, they, they do write in paragraphs. So, you know, there is cohesion between sentences. 
So I guess probably a sort of like maybe like a six for coherence and cohesion. Um, vocabulary, I thought their vocabulary was really quite good. They do attempt to use less common vocabulary. Um, so I think I probably want to give a 6.5 of vocabulary because I did think that was good in terms of grammar. Mm, they do make some errors. Um, they, when do they sort of reduce my communication? Um, you know, not really. They don't really reduce reduce their communication. They do have some sort of, you know, consistent grammatical issues, you know, perspective problems. Blah, blah, blah. So I think I think for grammar I would want to use um like a complex sentence forms. I mean in terms of sentences they use um they do try and use some sort of more complex sort of sentence structures like we can see here. Um you know, I think I would want to sue for grammar. I probably want to give a six for grammar. And I think overall, this candidate is sort of working out like a solid six uh, for their essay, um, which I think is good. Uh, lots of room to improve, um, but a good, a good structure. I would really um, have them work on sort of like their argument and linking their ideas in more. I think this can really be improved. Um, and then I would just have them check some of the, the, the grammar issues I, I pick them up on.